Metaleros de todo el mundo, welcome to Metal Talk. This is season 3. Esta es la temporada 3. Muchas gracias a toda la gente que nos apoya y ve nuestras entrevistas. La mm. mejor recompensa para nosotros es que nos den el subscribe button, que se suscriben aquí a nuestro canal para poder hacer más entrevistas de este estilo con los músicos que pues a ti te encantan y a mí también, la verdad. Today, we're kicking off the third season with an incredible guest. One that I've been waiting for for a long time, if I got to be honest. Uh, he's best known for his uh, he's best known for his incredible voice, one of the best in Brazil. Frontman to bands like Angra, Alma, and most recently his, of course, his solo career. His latest release is Veracruz, to be launched this month. His name is Edu Velasqui. Edu, how are you, my friend? Hello, people. Oh, super happy <laughs> to be here with you guys. <laughs> Oh, thank, thank you, you so much. Asking me to talk about Veracruz and, you know, the whole thing. Very nice to be here. Thank you, Edu. Thank you. Uh, you know, we, we love having you. You have an incredible career in the world of power metal. Uh, I think you're uh, the first Brazilian that we've had in the show. And Brazil is one of my favorite countries with amazing metal that it gives to us. So um, let me ask you straight out. Uh, mm -hmm. You've had some very active months, you know, in the past yeah. year. Uh, a lot of musicians went in hiatus, went into a break. But you were so busy with music. Yeah. How has life been treating you lately, Edu? How are you lately? Yeah, actually, it was. Uh, I used to say that that I I am a lucky guy, you know, because uh, when we started with this crazy stuff about the COVID, you know, uh, actually in March uh, last year, I was supposed to to stop my tour, the tour I was doing at that time was in a, an acoustic tour, you know. Then I, I started composing, and then I said, okay, I'm gonna stop doing the tour in March, and then I'm gonna start doing the, a new album in, in April. And then in that month, that month, everything stopped it, and so the concerts were canceled, you know. So, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know how, but uh, I was a lucky guy because uh, I was prepared to stop everything because I was supposed to, to record a new album. So for me, it was natural. So I was super, super happy because of that, because I didn't need to cancel concerts, you know, or to stay at home, at home thinking what, what, what I'm going to do now, because uh, I have nothing to do now. You know? So for me, it was perfect. I was starting composing and recording demos, you know, so I was working hard. More than one year. That's good. You know, so that's good. Yeah, it was lucky. <laughs> <laughs> busy, busy all the time, Mr. Edu. I say that you were lucky. You're absolutely right because throughout this hiatus, you know, uh, we saw through all last year we saw the the Temple of the Shadows DVD live. You know, uh, now we're gonna talk more about the, your solo career, what you've been doing a little bit later on. But let's start. With Edu Falaski's career, you know, yeah. uh, you begin your career with Mitrium, yes. uh, where you recorded several songs, uh, a demo. But mm -hmm. then in 94, a very important year for you, you are mm -hmm. selected as one of the Brazilian representatives to the Iron Maiden contest to replace yes. Bruce. You know, you were there yes. along with Andre. What an honor would that would that been, Edu? How did you feel at that time in that contest? Well, I was very young, you know, so uh, it was a surprise <laughs> for me. Yeah. So yeah. actually, uh, I wasn't expecting something like that because, uh, to be honest, I didn't send um, the material to Iron Maiden people. You know? So actually, it was a radio in Brazil, in Sao Paulo. Uh, this radio used the, the LP that I recorded in 93 or 4 for Metrium. Then they sent this the LP to, to England, you know. So I didn't know, actually. And then... Uh, I was in, in Sao Paulo, in Santos, actually, uh, and then uh, I was there with my friends, and uh, then uh, some people from this radio started calling me, said we didn't have mobiles in that time, you know? so they, they started calling <laughs> me to, to the house of my friends, and then they said, okay, do we, uh, we sent the material to England, they selected the, the material, and so you need to come to Sao Paulo to make interviews, you know, to, to talk, talk about that, you know, so I said, what the fuck is that? I don't mean I were crazy. And then, well, okay, I, I went to Sao Paulo and we started doing the interviews. And then, okay, it was funny. It was nice, you know, for my career in that time to, to promote sure. the, new, the new album I was releasing in that time, the Mitrium album. And then, uh, I, I think it's, it was two months later, uh, 
the people from the record label, the record label from Metro from that time, they called me, you know, I remember I was in, in my in my mother's house and then they called to my mother because they had that uh, that phone and then they said, OK, do uh, we, we just got a fax from the Iron Maiden crew from Dick Bell, the, uh, a guy that was working with Iron Maiden at that time. I don't know. I don't right. know if he's, he's work. He, he was working with Iron Maiden yet, but actually I said a fax from Iron Maiden. It's a real fax. We didn't have emails, you know, so it was a fax. Right, right, right. You then, got a uh, fax machine, you know. Yeah. Then uh, the people from the label, they said, okay, you, you need to come to, to, the, to, the, to the record office, you know, the, the, the record company office, and then we, we need to talk to them by phone. So you need to come here and to talk to them. And I was there, I was talking to Dick Bell about the, the, the things, you know, to send more material. And then... Uh, uh, they sent me, I think, two more facts uh, after that. And then they said, OK, now you need to wait because now we're going to choose the, the, the singer and then the, we're going to uh, analyze all the materials and then, and then we're going to decide who's going to be the, the, the Iron Maiden singer. And then I was waiting. But uh, to be honest, I, I, I understand that uh, Iron Maiden is an, it's a, it's a British Bank, you know, so for me, right. it's quite difficult to, to think that they they would uh, invite a, a Latin singer to to replace Bruce Dixon, you know. So, right. Uh, but I use it that that uh, the promotion, you know, to promote my band, you know, to promote me tune, to promote the album, you know, I was releasing that time. And then, so for me, it was was fantastic, you know. The whole thing was that is incredible. <laughs> That's incredible. Really how old were you at that time, Edu? Do you remember how old were you at that time? Uh, I, think, I think I was 20, 21. I don't know. 21? Something like, yeah, something like that. I was very, very young, you know, so. So you were drinking some beers with your friends and then out of nowhere they tell you, hey, you might be an Iron Maiden. <laughs> yeah, wow. Actually, uh, <laughs> I didn't drink, you know, in that time. Oh, no, okay. In, 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 I was like, I think I was playing video games, you know, oh. <laughs> something like that. You know? Okay, then, okay, uh, okay. Then the people from the radio said, oh, "Okay, we have this 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 material we sent to England, and then they choose you as a maybe uh, maybe a singer, a Brazilian singer, to replace Bruce Dixon." And then I said, "It's too crazy for me, you know." So, but everything was very important in that time. It was really cool. That is awesome, Edu. What a fantastic experience you must have lived. <laughs> uh, so a few years pass by. You take a little break from music, from what I read. Around 98 is when you come back to the music world with your brother uh, and form a band Symbols. Is that yes. right? Yes. Right? You were in another one, Ordinary Existence as well. Yes, Venus. Yeah. If, yeah. How was, how was this early times? Venus, of course. Yes, of course, yes. Venus is the name of the band. Yes. How how were your 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 years here as a young musician trying to rise up in the music world? Did you struggle a lot? Did you have a lot of opportunities? How was it in your early stage of your career? Ooh. Well, in the beginning, everything is hard, you know, because if we are right. young. We don't have money, you know. We never have money when we are teenagers, you know. So, or, um, well, I remember I was doing. Uh, concerts in Brazil at the time, uh, in Sao pa Paulo actually, and then uh, I was doing uh, university, you know, starting my, my, mm -hmm. my university as uh, I was studying pu publicity in that time, you know. Book publicity? Yeah, yes. Really? Yeah. Wow. Fanta I was going to ask you, what did you study? That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Then uh, I recorded two albums with, with symbols, you know. And at the same time, I recorded uh, this Venus album uh, in mm -hmm. 1998, I think. Right. Uh, well, actually, we didn't have many chances to, to tour in Brazil, you know, because we don't we didn't have uh, support from labels or any company. So we used it mm -hmm. to make a few concerts in Brazil, and we we used it to record albums, you know. So that was my my stuff in that time. But uh, the beginning is always hard. 
for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. You have to yeah. do everything to struggle to, you know, make a yeah. name of yourself. You were very lucky. Once again, I'm going to call you Mr. Luck, uh, you know, with a great <laughs> beginning to your career. You had this call from, yeah, you know, the from the radio station from Iron Maiden. But yeah. then around the year 2000 is when Edu really hits the world stage. Uh, mm -hmm. Angra extends an invitation for you to join the band and mm -hmm. launch Rebirth in 2001. And uh, not only for me, I believe, but for a lot of fans, a brand new Angra is born. Um, I have to say it. This is a personal opinion. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I believe it's much better than the old Angra, truthfully, with a more oh, European you. <laughs> rich. Yes, with a really European rich, progressive technical sound, which is just fantastic. Um, you know, honestly, out of Rebirth, Heroes of Sand, Judgment Day, which I know you had participation in writing, mm -hmm. it's just fantastic, yes. really projects your voice and all that. When it comes to Angra, Edu, mm -hmm. what are some of your favorite moments, uh, whether it's joining the live DVD, where you mm -hmm. can show how good of a front man you are? Yeah. Um, what are some of your favorite moments and, and your introduction to Angra? Wow. Hard to say, you know, because uh, you can take your time. Go I, ahead and I think had, about it. I, yeah, I had many good moments, you know, but um, I remember when I was to Japan. You know, Japan is always a dream, you know, for any musician. You know, when you go to Japan, you just you can say, okay, I got it, you know. So um, I remember the first concert in Japan uh, for five thousand people, I think. You know, so for me it was crazy because I was in another country, the other side of the world, you know, so singing my, my songs, you know, I composed right. many, many songs for that album. Uh, Nova Era, I composed... Uh, Nova Hero, Era too, Hero, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Heroes of Sand, um, Bleeding Heart, actually Bleeding Heart was supposed to be in this album, but we decided to put in a EP later. Got it. Uh, yeah. Judgment Day, you know, as you said, uh, I think it's that, or it always is that, you know, so, but I did many important songs, like Nova Era is uh, the first one, you know, so it's a very nice song, it, it, it was important for, for Anger in that time, you know, right. uh, well, I remember I was singing Nova Era in Tokyo for 5,000 people singing my song, you know, in Japan, so it was really nice, really nice, I was very happy. <laughs> That, that is fantastic, man. Uh, like you said, incredible album, incredible choice, sele uh, uh, song selection. I think uh, a Bleeding Heart makes it into the uh, Hunters and Prey, uh, yes. ca uh, Casador, uh, yes, the EP, yes. correct? That's it, right, yeah. right, which is also a great EP as well, let me tell you. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Edu, uh, you know, uh, Temple of Hate is mm -hmm. also regarded as one of the best <laughs> Just metal albums out there. It has a theme. It has great songs. It has a lot of incredible uh, music. Uh, what, which album from the catalog do you feel was your favorite time with Angra? Uh, maybe one. Maybe it's it's Rebirth since it was your first mm -hmm. one. Which was your favorite one? Oh, hard question. Um, There's got to be well, one. Well, actually. <laughs> well, I love Rebirth, you know, because obviously it was my first album with Angry, you know, so it's natural. But right. Tape of Shadows was different because we decided to make it, make it more progressive, you know, so mm -hmm. uh, we used different elements, you know, we did uh, different, uh, we used a different uh, style of, of music, you know, like uh, Brazilian music, Indian music, uh, uh, Spanish stuff, you know, so... We used it, um, even Arabian arrangements, you know, into the songs. Right. So I think the album is very complex, uh, very sophisticated. You know, I, I used to say that because uh, I, I always said that it's not an easy album, you know, because nah, it's very, nah. it's very dense, very progressive with many different elements, you know. Um, but. Um, Choose and then you have a uh, Kai Hansen. Okay, I, I, I will choose Temple of Shadows. Okay, Temple of Shadows for Temple me. Of my, Shadows. I think it's my, uh, I can say, my high, highest level as a composer and singer in Angra, in Angra times, you know? Right, 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 right. How was it to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how was it to share um, 
you know, the a, a song with Kai Hansen, the god of power metal, and obviously yeah. Hansi father, Kirsch the is father in, of power metal. The father of power metal. And then you have Hansi Kirsch as well, you know, yeah. uh, from Blind Guardian, which is just amazing and an amazing addition to Winds of Destination. How, yeah. how, how did it feel to complement the album so well with these great guests? Which, I, I mean, Kai Hansen, yeah. did, were you a, a Halloween fan when you were young? Did you yeah, like Halloween? For sure, uh, for sure. You know, as a power metal singer, it's like a, it's a, a must. kind of an obligation, you know. <laughs> you need to <laughs> an obligation. That, you know? Yeah, yeah, you yes. need to hear that. No? So, uh, well, uh, I remember I was in Germany, you know, recording vocals. Then uh, mm -hmm. uh, when Dennis Ward, the producer, showed me the Kai Hansen voice and then the Hansi Kirsch voice, I was like, what the fuck? That's rock and roll. That's part yeah. of that. You know? So uh, I was super happy to be beside those icons, you know heroes power metal heroes you know so my idols you know so i was very satisfied <laughs> that's that's incredible it's like uh in those songs it's almost and with the theme of the album it's almost like a battle between you two you know you guys are yes, yeah yeah yes. exchanging sure. yeah yeah uh, and the vocals are different you know so as you said it's kind of a it's kind of a battle you know it, it was perfect in that time Absolutely. <laughs> to uh, to to kind of wrap up the the Angra topic, because, um, you know, here at Metal Talk, we like to talk about the real things that fans wonder, you know, yes. the real things that that fans want to know about. So I want to I want to uh, bring up a quick reference. You know, last last season uh, we spoke to uh, uh, Tommy Karavik from Camelot. You know, we uh, asked him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, Tommy, uh, we asked him how it felt to. Uh, and replaces the wrong word to step in for us such an iconic singer, who, which was Roy. My mm -hmm. question to you mm -hmm. is, how did you feel about uh, stepping in for Andre? But then most importantly, Edu, what I'm, what I, what mm -hmm. I want to know is how, how was it for you to overcome that challenge and to incredible reception mm -hmm. by the audience and mm -hmm. by the critics? Everyone loved the album. Everybody loved your edition. How mm -hmm. did that feel? I'm pretty sure you were relieved. Yeah. Uh, I used to say that I had different moments in different countries, you know? You know so right. in Brazil, it, it was easy because uh, there was a contest in Brazil and everybody voted in my name. So it was kind of natural, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. In Japan, I always it was nice because uh, my wife in that time was Japanese. So I had in that time a connection with Japan already. Right. Europe was different, you know, in Italy it was easier. Uh, I was more confident in these countries, Brazil, Japan, Italy, Spain. But I remember in France, in France it was hard because uh, right. the French Angra fans, they really love André, you know, so, uh, and André, he, he spoke, in, in, he spoke French, you know, so, uh, and then, uh, if you go to France and you speak in French, you know it's different. You know? So the people will right. say, "Wow, it's more like they feel better," you know. So, but I, I don't speak French, so I, I was speaking in English uh, at the first time, and then uh, I remember there were some kind of uh, comparisons, you know, between that. You know, right. so ah, you don't speak, you don't speak French. I said, "No, I don't speak French." Ah, okay, because Andrea used it to speak French, so. I said, ah, okay, good for him, you know, so, but I don't speak French, so let's talk in English, you know, so, <laughs> well, but then I, I felt kind of a uh, uh, strange reaction from the journalists and from the fans in that time, you know, kind of, uh, they were not so sure about the quality of Angra with me, you know, so I think that, you know, but uh, after the album was releasing, released, the, 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 Rebirth album and the, the first tour in Paris, especially Paris, things started changing. And so the fans were saying, oh, "Okay, you do now. I see you have a potential to to sing it, uh, undress songs and the new songs." So, okay, we're gonna give you a chance. You know, something like that. <laughs> something like that. But uh, in general, it was really nice. You know, I was very, very confident. In that time, no. So it was 
nice. You know that a lot of metalheads, a lot of metal fans, maybe such as yourself, sometimes we long for the old stuff, but yeah. it's always good to keep our ears open for the new stuff. Like yeah. when you joined Agra, it was just a fantastic change. And again, like I said, I think it's better, truthfully. Uh, speaking of uh, the late Andre, we've spoken of a lot of musician friends across the world. Mm -hmm. uh, we had Timo Tolki uh, tell us, from Stradivarius, tell us about him. We mm -hmm. had uh, Sasha Paeth tell us his stories with with him as well. Mm -hmm. uh, any uh, uh, Anything that you can remember from, uh, from Andre? Maybe you guys spoke, was he encouraging? Was he a, a nice fella to you? Did you guys get along? No, actually, uh, I remember in Rock in Rio Festival in Brazil, uh, we talked mm -hmm. a bit you know, so about the past of Angra, you know, about the future, about many things, but uh, actually we didn't talk too much. I, I met him two or three times, you know, and always everybody running, you know, so yeah. and, and then working, so it's not so, so easy to talk. So... Uh, But Andre, with me, he was always very polite, you know. I think this is the word, you know. Always very polite. polite. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we met three times, I think two or three times. And then always, I remember him as a very polite guy, you know. So we never had any, any bad situation about anger, for example. You know? Right. Like, ah, you, you are re replacing me, you know, something like that. You know? mm -hmm. We never had that. But actually, I didn't have a chance to talk to him, to really talk, like uh, one hour, two hours, you know. So I, I, I don't have many things to say about that, you know. What, what, what did you think he was? Did you admire him as a singer? Did you like his style? Yes, for, for sure, for sure. Yeah. yeah, his voice was unique, you know, so very unique because uh, if you hear that kind of voice, you say, that's Andre Matos, you know. So mm -hmm. it's very him, that sound, you know, so for sure. Just like when you listen to Edu Falaski, you say, that's Edu. <laughs> so that's great. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, fortunately, you're right, fortunately. So, you know, we continue along uh, the, your career. Um, around midway through your career with Angra, you start this incredible project, which when you announced it, I became a fan instantly because I love the lineup that you included uh, mm -hmm. with Alma. Uh, yes. You bring, uh, a, 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 you mean uh, an all-star lineup, Ampu, yes. Lauri Porra from Stradivarius and yes. Casey Grillo from Camelot. Yes. What an insane lineup. That's so cool. <laughs> that, how, that, how do you gather these guys team. together? The power metal dream team, you know? <laughs> it sure is those guys are so amazing i was so lucky one more time <laughs> <laughs> well uh i remember i was planning um to show to the show the people something different something heavier uh modern you know uh more modern than angry style uh, mm -hmm. i used uh, some guitars with seven strings i think in the time uh But um, it's, it's still a power metal album, you know, but uh, with different, different approach comparing to Angry Style, you know, that was the idea. And I brought my friends, you know, because we are friends. So we are friends, actually. So it was very, very nice. I remember I recorded guitars in Finland, guitars and bass. I was oh, there wow. uh, and drums. Uh, uh, In U.S., so in the U.S., with yeah, uh, where Kesa yeah. lives, like in Florida or something, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I think Tampa, as far as I remember. Tampa, Tampa, yeah. Tampa, Florida. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, great times. <laughs> it was very, it was a great very, time. It's a great album. It's a great album. Very nice. It is. How did you how did you select Ampu, Laudi, and Casey? Was it the label? Was it you? Um, a combination? No, no, no. We are, we are friends. So I said I want to. I love Ampo as a guitar player, you know, the style, you know. Yeah. Uh, and actually, I remember in the time, I didn't want some, some shred guitar player. I wanted right. some more groovy, you know, some more, uh, more direct guitar player in that time for that album. 
That's mm -hmm. why I decided to, to invite Ampu, you know, for because I'm, I'm a Nightwish fan, you know. So uh, I said, okay, Ampu, what do you think about doing a, a, an album with me? And he said, let's do it. <laughs> so <laughs> it was natural. Most Amazing. because of the friendship, you know, there wasn't like labels or anybody involved. It was like just talking and let's do it. Very, it's like good friends coming yeah, together yeah, to make very, music. Yeah, very e easy going, everybody. That's incredible. That's incredible. <laughs> of course, uh, with Alma, you release more albums, Fragile Equality, uh, uh, Motion Unfold, Evo. Uh, I think that obviously you have some lineup changes. Uh, you start mm -hmm. including some some more Brazilian musicians in this. Uh, yeah. You bring Marcelo, who's uh, now currently a guitarist for yeah. Anger as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. And some great songs. I mean, I was just listening to Speranza right now, and I just can't. It, it's very hooky, you know. It, yeah, it nice. sticks to you. It's a great song. It's a great variation. Yeah. Um, very, very cool. Uh, Alma is a band. I have a lot of friends that love Alma as well. It was kind of <laughs> like um, your your get away from what you had in Angra. You know, it's a different I style. See. It's not the same style. Yeah. It, it's it's still in your face, but it's a little bit different. It's very enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah. You know, so. That was my idea, doing something different, you know, yeah. because it makes no sense for me making another anger, you know, like anger to the mission, you know, something right, like that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, uh, I think that I think the idea was doing something modern, you know, and mm -hmm. more straight. And then, uh, well, I decided to invite Brazilian musicians because I wanted to tour, you know, to, to make concerts. Of course, and and, they, and with ample Audi and and KC, so it would be difficult, you know, to do that. That's right. why I decided to create another band, you know. So, uh, but uh, always good musicians, always for all albums, you know. So it's a great band. It's a very nice band, you know. Absolutely. I mean, I've I've heard the I've heard the records. I've seen him live on on YouTube mostly. I've not the opportunity to see uh, uh, Alma live, and it's just incredible. I mean, it's a very good musicianship. It's yeah. a very high quality music, and obviously fronted by Edu. I mean, come on, it's almost guaranteed to be great. Uh, Edu, I wanted to talk to you about now. We finally, after we've explored your entire career, we come mm -hmm. to your solo career which has a lot of highlights as well, a lot of recent ones. For example, most recently, uh, you caught everyone by storm on the internet when you released your Temple of the Shadows concert DVD online. I remember it just mm -hmm. popped up on my YouTube and I couldn't believe it. I hooked up uh, on it of immediately. Uh, of course, <laughs> it's now available. You can buy it at edufalaski.com.br. You, mm -hmm. you can get it there, right? Yeah, yes. Perfect. So make sure that From you get Japan. it there. Metalheads. From Japan. It was released. From Japan. Yeah, it was released in, in DVD and Blu-ray only in Japan, you know. Only in Japan. Only what Japan, about the rest yeah. of the world? Yeah, actually, for the rest of the world, I needed to have the license from the other composers, you know. Got to you. Print, to print that. So in that right. time, when I decided to create this solo career, things were starting getting strange. You know, so between the relationship <laughs> yeah. between me and the other guys, you know, the other anger guys, and then, uh, mm -hmm. but I love them, you know, no, no problem at all. But uh, I needed to have the, the license, you know, and I didn't get. So that's why I released only Japan because there is allowed, you know. Are you are you planning on uh, Edu? Are you planning on perhaps? continuing the uh, to find to get those rights so you can release it in the rest of the world because we yeah, all yes, love to yes. see it what are your plans yeah, for that dealing. we are dealing and then uh because they want to release my stuff as well you know so they want of to course. release you know my songs so we are dealing you know i hope in the future in the near future future we can have everything free for everybody i hope that <laughs> I think uh, with your luck, Edu, you're going to get it, Edu. With your luck, you'll get it, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> hey, that's, that is great. Uh, you know, I have to be honest with you. Um, and I listen to it a lot in, on Spotify, which is, you know, here in the United States, we use a lot of Spotify. But yeah, I, cannot, I cannot get Glory of the Sacred Truth out of my head. It's just <laughs> a good song. I'm Very listening nice song. to it all the time. To be honest with you, it's probably the most... Angra-like 
music that I've heard since Temple of the Shadows, man. Like, yes, it's yes. so damn in your face and it's so damn good. Yeah. Um, what an amazing song, I must say. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, is, th is this what I is this what we as metal fans and all of your uh, fans? Is this what we can all expect in Veracruz? That style? Mm -hmm. This? Yes. Well, uh, I would tell you a story, you know, so um, I was playing with Alma, you know, it was a, it, 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 it's a great band, but um, I never, I, I'm going to be very honest with, okay, with you. I never yeah. reached any anger level with Alma, you know, uh, I, but I was working, I was not doing concerts, doing albums, you know, but uh, I, I was playing in, in, I, I, I got an invitation to, to sing in, in Peru with a local band, you know. Right. Then I was there in Peru singing anger songs you know, because the, the, the promoter, he said, I don't want you to sing Alma or other stuff. I want you to sing anger songs, okay? And I said, okay. I was there alone with a local band. And then we, we, we did the concert. Right. In that time, I don't know if he will remember that, but uh, I was after the concert, my concert, uh, I was in a restaurant with Johnny Turner, you know, the Rainbow, the, the, the Turner. Rainbow Singer, yeah. Yeah, Johnny Turner. Then uh, we were talking, and then I, he asked me, who are you? you know, because he didn't know me. You know? Then uh, we, I, I, Michael Vissera was, was together, you know, uh, was there with us. Uh, then uh, we were talking. I, I said, okay, I'm a Brazilian singer from anger, blah, blah, blah. I said I, I was not in anger anymore, and I wasn't singing anger songs anymore. That concert in Peru was the, the, the only one, you know. And he was okay, but uh, I remember there were like thousand, I don't know, two thousand people singing the songs. And then he said, "But uh, why don't you sing anger songs anymore? Because people want you to sing anger songs, you know. They were singing together, singing along with you. So why you don't don't we don't do that?" And I said, "Oh, because I have a new band with new songs, blah blah blah." Then he said, "How old are you?" I said, "My my age." And then he said. Man, you are an old, old, old singer, so you are a kind of a classical, <laughs> classic, classic singer, no? Traditional right. singer. The fans, they, they don't want to hear you singing another stuff. They want you to sing Angra, you know, because they know you from Angra, you know. And he said, I, I used to sing Rainbow and the Purple always, you know. So mm -hmm. uh, he said, I, I make albums, you know, new songs, but I, I always sing my old stuff, my old um, uh, cla classic songs, you know. Right, right, well, right. Well, then, then I said, oh, I was thinking about that, you know, so I said, okay, uh, he said, so now you're going to come back to Brazil, to Brazil and you, you're going to create a solo career, okay? And I said, fuck, really? <laughs> okay, I'm going to think <laughs> about that. Then I was in Brazil, and I started talking to promoters, you know, and then the promoter said, hey, do if you do a tour singing only anger songs from your, 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 your times, you know, everybody will go to see you. So we're going to buy the concerts. We're going to invest money in your concerts if you do that. And then I said, well, why not? Then I invited Achilles Priester because uh, mm -hmm. we played together in anger, you know, since 2001 right. to 2000. Nine, I think I don't know, or eight. Or it's, it's, uh, yeah, right. The last album yeah. where where you both yeah. were Aurora Consurgence. The Aurora Consurgence. Yes. Right. Well, uh, after that, I was in Brazil. I invited him. He said, "Okay, let's do it." Then I I I I, I booked seven concerts. All concerts were sold out. Wow. All concerts. Like two thousand people, one thousand five hundred people, you know. Well, with Alma, in that time I was playing for five hundred people, four hundred people, you know. Then mm -hmm. I said, Joylin Turner is right. <laughs> you were right. <laughs> yeah. Then I well, then I decided to make a bigger tour, you know, in two thousand eighteen, mm -hmm. and it was a huge success in Brazil. Huge success. Then we, we played in Japan as well. Then it was a huge success in Brazil, in, in Japan as well. Uh, two, two sold out concerts in Tokyo and Osaka. Uh, and then I said, okay, I'm, 
I'm doing the, the right thing, you know? Mm -hmm. And the fans started saying, okay, we love you singing angry songs. Fantastic. But what about new songs as well? Then I said to Achilles, what do you think? He said, okay, let's record a new album. Then we, we did Veracruz. <laughs> That's the history. Fantastic. It's, so, <laughs> it's such a good story. And I think Joe Lynn Turner was right. Everybody thank Joel and Turner for an amazing uh, album that we're expecting with Veracruz. Thank so you. yeah, I uh, don't know if he remembered that, but he changed my life. I need to say that. Wow. I think we have to ask him. We have to ask Joel and Turner at some point. We will. Yeah. You'll see. I don't know if you, if he will remember, but uh, mm. he was like a turning point in my career. I use that. I used to say that. I see exactly what you're saying. Uh, you mentioned Achilles, which uh, is such a big, and that was the beauty of Angra. Uh, you know, I think that every member uh, 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 had a very important role, uh, mm -hmm. whether it was you, whether it was uh, Achilles, Felipe, anybody. Mm -hmm. um, so um, how did you come to the conclusion to invite him back to work with you in Veracruz? Mm -hmm. And again, what a wise decision, because I think it does bring those elements that us metalheads were nostalgic for obviously his drums your voice yeah. you know what i mean um how did you decide to work with him once again well uh that's the point that uh is connected to your previous question you know about the Correct. style you know because you said about the um, the the glory of the sacred truth is very angry you know so right. uh and then uh, i said to Achilles, okay People want us to, to sing anger songs, so that's our style, you know. So if you say, if you if you hear Nova Era, you know, it's my composition. That's the way I, I used to compose. It's not only anger; it's a song from Edu and Kiko, you know. So we compose together. Well, mm -hmm. uh, then it's natural, you know. So I said to Achilles, right. "What we're gonna sound? We need to find a, a way to go, you know." And he said, it's our style. If I play this song, I will sound like playing Angra. And you too. And we together, it's even more. You know, so let's do that. You know, so it's just a continuation uh, of, um, of a story from 2001 to here. You know, so it's kind That's of right. a continuation. You know? I used to say that because it's, it's very natural for us, you know. We are the same people that played that album and composed that album, so it's 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 natural, no? <laughs> so it's 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 not really the the Angra sound, but the Edu sound and the Achilles yeah. sound. But now yeah. that's exactly what it is. Yeah, that is. What I said is the opposite, you know. So Angra sounded like that in 2001 because of five guys, you know, Me, right. Achilles, Kiko, Rafael, and Felipe, you know. So. Uh, mm -hmm. But I composed many important songs like Spread of Fire, yeah. Nova Era, Years of Saint, mm -hmm. Angels and Demons, uh, Wishing right. Well, Bleeding Heart, um, The Course of Nature, uh, well, uh, Hunters and Prey, Judgment Day, I know many songs, you know. So, so many. Right. If you hear me now, it's just, I am the same person, you know, the same composer from that time. So it's natural, you no? Know? It's impossible to separate one thing from another, you know. So it's. Totally natural. That's that's so cool, man. Edu, uh, let me ask you. On May 12th, you are mm -hmm. hosting a listening party for Veracruz, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. On Facebook. Uh, when will the album be available worldwide? When can we expect to have that album in our hands, order it from your website? When is the launch date for this date, for this album? In six days. <laughs> in, exactly in six days. Yeah, yeah. Actually, no, actually, we are, today is, today's 10th, right? Today's the 10th, yeah. In eight days. In eight days, in, on May 18th. It will be available everywhere uh, in the, the digital platforms. In the digital platforms, yeah. fantastic. E everybody will be able to, to listen to Veracruz. Will you be you will be releasing a limited press of, uh, of uh, albums as well, right? Yeah, gonna yeah, be a yeah, small... yeah, for sure, for sure. Right. Yeah, or Digipack or Digibook, and also it depends on the country, you know. So, but right. 
of course, I'm going to release. But today, nowadays, it's like it's a digital world. You know? So yeah, <laughs> that's why there are still to say that the worldwide releasing is 18th because it will be available everywhere, like in the platforms and the digital platforms. So it's like it's right, something like right, that. Right. So if you are like me and you still like co like to collect the album and the digital and all that, then right, make sure you log on to edufalaski.com.br so that you can get your album as well. May 18th is the release date. Do not miss it. I'm super excited to oh. listen to this album. And uh, Edu, uh, finally, we want to ask you, outside of the music world, Edu, mm. what are some of your hobbies or favorite things to do? Do you like... Football, you know, being Brazilian, I'm from Mexico. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of uh, <laughs> football. Uh, you know, what are your favorite things to do once you're not, you know, doing music? Uh, video games. I love video games. Video games. Yeah. Really? Uh, I love FIFA, you know, FIFA, football. Yes, I love and, FIFA. Uh, Ultimate I, I team. love Call of Duty as well, you know. Uh, and I love arcade games like... Uh, <laughs> games from the 80s, you know, Pac-Man, Pitfall, uh, right. River Raid, uh, you know, very old games. I love that, too. <laughs> Older games. Are you a PlayStation yeah. guy or an Xbox guy, Edu? Yeah, tell me. PlayStation. PlayStation. Yeah, I have both, but I used to play PlayStation. I prefer the control is more, you know, it's it's better, right? Yeah, yeah, I think it's better. Yeah, 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 it's better. I think it's better. The other one is uh, Xbox is way too bulky. Do you play do you play FIFA online by any chance? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, you're yes. going to have to give me your screen name when we log off uh, so that we I, can play a little bit, right? I used to play pro, pro clubs. Do you know this this section? Yeah, pro clubs. Yeah. Yeah. I love pro clubs. I have my own team, you know, with uh, many players. Right. It's really fun. Really nice. <laughs> Do you still play pro clubs right now? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, who, yes. Who, who's, uh, who do a, you? I have a championship today. A very important one. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At what time, Edu? Are you getting ready for, for the championship? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's super nice, you know. Uh, I have my own uh, YouTube channel for, for games, you know. So Really? I'm, yeah, I'm going to broadcast this game. And I'm going to send you the... The link. Maybe you can watch the game. You know? So, but uh, yes, it's funny. absolutely. It's very nice. Very nice. That is so cool, man. I did <laughs> not know you were such a big FIFA fan like me. That is amazing. So it's metal oh, and nice to know. Cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Who's your team, Edu, from Brazil? Corinthians. Corinthians, of yeah. course. Corinthians. Yeah. Yes. I love Corinthians. Yeah. What about the worldwide? If we're talking Champions League, who's your team? Oh man. Uh, actually, I'm a very huge uh, Cristiano Ronaldo fan, you know, so now I am supporting Juventus. <laughs> Me too! Me you too! Do? Yeah! Oh, yeah! Man. Yeah! Hell yeah, man! Look, Bianconeri here, Blanc, uh, you know, Blanco y Negro, Bianconeri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Juve, been a Juve fan since I was a kid. Yeah, you and too. I have a common, Edu. That's awesome, dude. Fantastic. Uh, well, <laughs> Edu, tell us, where can we find you as a fanatic? Where can we stay up to date with news of you? Can we find you on social media? I know you're on Facebook, you're yeah. on Instagram. Where else can we find you? Well, I think mainly Google it, you know, so it's very easy. Put my name on Google, you know. Then you got to see many things like uh, Instagram. I am always on Instagram. Um, uh, Facebook, YouTube, and then uh, Twitter as well. Mm, I think it's it's enough, you know. <laughs> enough, yeah. yeah, yeah it's it's enough. enough. Edu, mm. I want to thank you so much for your time. Oh, this man. was an incredible interview. Much. Such a great metal talk. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I really admire you as an artist. We can't wait for Veracruz worldwide release on May 18th. Thank you Make very sure much. you get it. Preload it now on Spotify. You can do that. You can pre-save your album on Spotify. Yeah. Listen to it when it launches. Edu, thank you so much, my friend. Thank you, man. So hope to see you soon on tour, maybe in Mexico or US, you know. So that's right. I hope that. Thank you very much. 
<laughs> Thank you. Thank you for opening our season three. Metaleros, esto es la temporada tres de Metal Talk. Suscríbanse. Gracias a nuestro amigo Edu Falashi de El Increíble. Yeah, yeah, la increíble carrera. De México. Gracias por todo. Gracias. Yeah. Thank you, Edu. See ya.